<laughs> when I was in my 20s, I had a reputation for being able to hold my liquor and illicit substances in titanic proportions. <laughs> so it was most surprising when I found myself vomiting after consuming but one finger full of vodka. At first I thought it was food poisoning, except that it kept on happening night after night. <laughs> I allowed it to go on for a full month before I went to the doctor and man, wouldn't you know it? I was pregnant. <laughs> the father of the feisty, teetotaling fetus <laughs> was a long, tall, dark streak of melancholy. A hard drinking, hard smoking man of few words. His name was Slim and I met him in a bar. We went back to his place and started living together from that very first night, as you do. <laughs> and there I was, six weeks later, just a little bit pregnant. <laughs> After weeks of wrestling with the idea of whether or not I could be a mother, I had a dream. I dreamt my child and me in the future, I know, spooky. When I woke up, I alerted Slim to the fact that we were now going to have a baby. He took it in his stride. Whatever you reckon, darling, I'll stick by you. I love you. Having a baby would be pretty cool. <laughs> Is it really mine? <laughs> Fair enough. Overnight, I went from being Miss Insatiable Drugs and Liquor Fiend to Miss Super Queen of Living Clean. Uh, we booked into a birth centre and started going to birthing classes. In hindsight, it amazes me that I would have even considered, let alone actually had a natural birth. It must have been a combination of maternal guilt at my first trimester's transgressions and those snake oil salesmen I hooked up with. <laughs> Midwives. <clears throat> Midwives, bless them, and if there's any here today, I love you, but you kill you, they kill you with kindness and reason. They made me watch a bunch of creepy, natural, no drugs whatsoever birth videos. <laughs> Did I say drugs? There were no drugs. Natural childbirth videos are a complete misnomer. They should call them what they really are, gruesome wrecks for the uninitiated. <laughs> Every mother-to-be shrieked and wailed her way through long, hard labour. I decided it was all too revolting and that my birth wouldn't be anything like it. <clears throat> my birth, you know, I was just not going to be one of those stupid have hippies having what they were doing. My birth was going to be beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why did women have to scream like Harridans, I reasoned. Surely it wasn't possible to make a mellifluous noise or two? I determined that my baby would be born on a wave of sound. That's what I decided. <clears throat> Every day for six months I practice a la Albert Finney in the film The Dresser. Instead of saying, stop that train, I was saying, stop that pain. <clears throat> I would mantra, I am a magnificent, accommodating palace of a woman. I am a magnificent, accommodating palace of a woman. I am a magnificent, accommodating palace of a woman. And then I'd do a series of pretendy Tai Chi movements because I was too lazy to learn the real thing. I'm in labour. I'm on all fours. I'm on my hands and knees and I'm going around in circles. There's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to go. Uh, there's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to go. Ah! I wasn't sounding quite. Stop that train. There's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to go. Ah! Get Frank off. Get bloody Frank Sinatra off. I'm not having a baby born to... Ah! Breathe, Lily. Breathe. You breathe, you sanctimonious... Ah! <clears throat> the midwife is only trying to help, doll. Shut up, Slim, this is all your fault. How come there's so many people here? It's like a freaking circus in here. Who asked you here? You did, Lil. No, I didn't get, oh! Good girl, Lily, that's a good girl. You're doing really well. It won't be long now. Good girl, good 
stop, girl, make it stop. Please make it stop. Please make it stop. It's pain with a purpose, Lily. Pain with a purpose. <laughs> Shove your purpose. This is a nightmare. Soon you're going to have a beautiful baby, Lily. Now, there's moments between the contractions when I'm lucid. Get with a contraction and watch reality slip right away. I'm a magnificent, accommodating palace of a woman. It's a mad, repetitive whisper at this stage. I'm a magnificent, accommodating palace of a woman. Oh, my God, there's poo. <laughs> there's some poo and I can feel it. Everyone, get out! Get out! God help me, there's poo! No, there's not, Lily. Oh, yes, there is. There's poo and everyone can see it. No, Lily, there isn't any poo. There is. Lily, it's all right. It's gone now. See? I told you it was there. I'm mortified. Oh, please, 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 please let this be over. <clears throat> they actually gave me some gas and I had to fight Slim to get at it. <clears throat> I don't know what it says about my psyche, but I allowed six people, friends and family, in that birthing suite with me. They all had to have permission to see my baby's head crowning, then popping right on out of me, but most of them had never witnessed me in a bathing suit before. <laughs> and there I was, wigging out completely when it came to a tiny piece of poo. <clears throat> Now, here's the surprise. My baby was not born on a wave of sound. My beautiful, heavenly, stellar baby boy was born on a shriek, kind of like, ah! <coughs> a bone-crunching, wall-tearing shriek. A Chinese doctor called Rodney was called in to stitch me up. Lovely. Ow, 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 ow. How much did it hurt? Ow. I don't suggest you name the baby after me, said Dr. Rodney. Why would we, Rodney? Why would we? The midwife offered me a super strength Tylenol and I said I was thinking morphine might be more appropriate at this juncture. I've always thought that if I ever became pregnant again, and yes, I know for any cynics looking at me now, it is probably only a biblical possibility, but if I did, I'm so opting for that birth plan called knock me out and wake me up when it's over. 